Hey, what's up, you guys? Critical here. Um, and today, I just want to talk about the, like, impact that literature in school has had on me in general. Um, you know, because it's always fun to talk about reading books. And you know what? Listen, I'm going to make this as entertaining as possible. And by entertaining, I mean not really. I'm just sort of just going to be here. Um, just being myself. I am really bad at talking like, actually, you know what? I used to be really good at talking, but now I'm just not good at talking anymore. I am also really sick, so I you can probably hear it in, like, my nose, or maybe, I don't know. I'm vo- going voice cracking. I'm sorry for existing. <laughs> okay, so let's just talk about the books I read. Like, I don't really remember a lot, so we're probably just going to go from 6th grade to now. I'm in 10th grade now. I don't really remember anything, like in like fifth grade before because I read so many books in like fourth grade and third grade and second grade because I was homeschooled and I got to read whatever uh, books I pleased and it was great uh fifth grade I just don't remember I think we read like Alice in Wonderland or something like that but that's the only thing I can like legitimately remember but anyway so in sixth grade we read this book called Star Girl over summer um it actually took place in like it was a very easy read, and it was about, like, this 10th grader, and that's kind of wild in that, like, I'm a 10th grader now, but it was about, like, this 10th grader girl who, like, she was, like, all fucked up, and, like, no one wanted to be her friend because she was, like, this weirdo, but, like, she's not the protagonist, well, she is, like, one of the protagonists, but, like, the narrator is this, like, dude who becomes her love interest, but then he, like, eventually, like, abandons her or something like that, and then she just straight up goes missing, so that's a thing, but... What I learned from that, um, don't judge people, I guess? I don't know. Like, me reading that as a sixth grader, I was just like, she's not weird, because I was a pretty quirky individual back then. And I still have shit wrong with me now, I just don't like to, like, show- Like, I I still have self-integrity, so I don't really like to show it in public. But if you know me, like, on any level of person, then you know that I'm a really shitty- person (laughs) like to just to be around and i'm just like yeah i'm just a whack-ass yee-ass lady here but also um another book i remember reading in sixth grade was called the k uh with c a y not the gay but it was a gay book it was about like this like black dude and this like little white boy (laughs) um and yeah, and the little white boy, he gets blind, and they get stranded on an island together, and then I think the dude dies at the end, but then the boy survives, and he's like, I'm not blind anymore, (laughs) and it's like a book about racism or something like that. Listen, I don't remember, like, my, like, as we progress further in, um, into my whack-ass reading history, my, like, sort of lessons I learned from books will spout out. So that seventh grade was so depressing. We just read books about cancer and, like, people dying. So first we read Brian's song, which it's not even, like, a book. It was, like, this weird, like, thing in a textbook where it was, like, this play. And we just read it out. And it was about this, like, football guy. I think it's a true story, actually, about this, like, football dude. And he just straight up dies of cancer and his friend is black or something like that. So uh, it teaches us about racism and cancer two things that go together well um and uh then we read another this book called big fish and it's about this dude who like he's like the he's like a father um and his son's a narrator and his son is like talking about like all the crazy wacky stories that his dad told him before he died of cancer and turned into a fish he straight up yeets and he like he straight up turns into a fish at the end of the book like someone spoiled this to me and i was just like what the hell okay but no he just straight up turns into a fish because he gets cancer so he needs to like swim in the pool to calm his nerves or something so he just straight up turns into a uh, so that's yeah so what i learned from that uh cancer is bad but making stories is cool then we read old man in the sea and you know what that just made me want to kill myself because it was literally just like a hundred pages of some guy complaining about his back and not being able to catch a fish and like no one died but it was just depressing i mean 
because like he like works so hard and then he just like doesn't get it and like it's literally there's no story whatsoever it's just this dude on a boat for like 10 hours it's terrible and then uh we read uh boy in the striped pajamas which was about this little boy in germany or i think poland i don't know And he, like, meets this other little kid, and he's like, oh my god, but, like, they meet at, like, the fence for the concentration camp, which is, like, literally the most improbable thing that could happen ever, but, hold up, I'm sick, I need a blow All right, so I found a solution to my problem. I'm just gonna turn this into a podcast. So, guys, welcome to the One Woman Podcast Show, where I just talk about things that really no one cares about, but... You know, the thing is, I don't really have a lot of people to talk to, which is really stupid, but, I mean, I do probably have people to talk to, I just don't want to, like, bother them, and here, you can shut me up at any time, you could just click out, you've probably already clicked out right now, people who are watching this, congrats, but anyway, let's continue on, the profound impact literature has had, so yeah, Boy in the Stripe Pajamas, it was straight up depressing, the little... (laughs) spoiler alert they all die like the little german boy walks into camp with the jew boy and they're like "Ah, let's let's play let's play together in the camp let's take a shower together and then they straight up get gassed and they die uh so yeah i think those were all the books i had to read in seventh grade and my seventh grade teacher he was freaking dead inside and i don't blame him he was this tall ass dude with like really low voice and like he had absolutely no emotion and like literally like seventh graders are the hardest people to shut up but it happened it it happened like, we all shut up when he came into the room because he was just that scary and intimidating, you know? So, life hacks for when you're a teacher, just be tall. The end. All right, so eighth grade was kind of better, but we just read a bunch of books about, like, disabled people so we could learn, I don't know, empathy or something. That's what my teacher told me. She was this fat lady. <laughs> No, that I mean, I mean, that was so mean. But yeah, she was like this feminist. I don't know if she was like actually a feminist, but like she gave off those vibes. But like, okay, no, no. But literally like picture like, you know, that one like image of like a triggered feminist with like red hair and like glasses. That's low key what she looked like. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and she low key was like that too. But anyway, so we had to read these books about disabled people so we could learn empathy. So we started off with well, actually, you know, what? I actually liked eighth grade, eighth grade English because like she had some freedom in her classroom because like in um, lot in seventh grade we just sat there and we were like shut up and like yeah hold up I need to blow my nose again what the hell you know what you're gonna get some supreme nose blowing ASMR. <laughs> ah! oh wait that actually like reminds me in fifth grade this one dude named like siddharth he blew his nose too loudly in class and the teacher was like excuse me can 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 you leave and then he just straight up like bounces for the entire day it just reminded me of that um anyway so there was that but eighth grade was actually not too bad compared to seventh grade <laughs> Oh, what the hell? I'm, like, getting congested again. I don't know why I'm suddenly so sick. Um, but yeah. And, um, we read, like, this, like, short story called, like, Raymond's Run, where it was, like, this, like, dude who had pro- I don't even know. I think, like, this- it was, like, this black girl and this black boy, and, like, her brother had, like, like, some sort of mental condition- but she was, like, coaching him to become, like, a better runner or something. And then, uh, after that, we read Flowers for Algernon, which is about this guy who's, like, in a lab, and people do, like, a brain surgery on him, and his, like, IQ, like, doubles or something, or triples like that, and he's like, oh my god, wow, but then he reverts back to being, like, a 60 IQ person, <laughs> like me, <laughs> um, and, like, it's called Flowers for Algernon, because, like, there's this, like, lab mouse rat named Algernon that the guy, I think his name's, like, Charlie or something. The guy, like, uh, he, like, does, like, mazes. He, like, fills out this, like, little children's maze thing that you, why is my nose stuffy again? He, like, fills out this little, like, maze thing 
and the mice mouse always beats him because Algernon's like a lab rat and at the very end he's like because Algernon dies and at the very end uh Charlie's just like well put flowers on his grave or something like that and he just at the end he just straight up like bounces to New York or something and everyone's just like bro you have an IQ of 60 you can't and he's just like bye and he has like this weird like love thing with his caretaker it's creepy well not caretaker English teacher but like whatever okay and uh what else what else and then you know all those like little stories were prepping us for Mice and Men of Mice and Men which was honestly it was an okay book but like George really had to end Lenny's whole career yo like bruh like the ending I was not expecting the ending I literally wasn't expecting the ending uh oh wait and also for summer reading we had to read this book called like so be it which was about like this girl and her mom had like a mental disability and she was like i need to figure out who my father is so she like goes on a search for her father and she is able to find it but then her mom dies like literally ever like someone dies in like every single book i read i swear to god um all right and next, we have, uh, yeah, so, you know, sis, you already been new of Mice and Men. If you, ha- okay, listen, if you haven't read Mice and Men, then what the f- heck is wrong with you? Because literally everyone had to read it. Everyone has to read it in America, all right? Let's get a distinction here, because it's an American novel by John Steinbeck, who I had to write, like, a whole damn biography about. And then my grandma won't shut up about him. She was just like, yeah, John Steinbeck, he wrote The Grapes of Wrath. You know what? I read The Grapes of Wrath. And I was just like, cool, that seems like a really long book that I just really don't feel like reading. And she's like, Grapes of Wrath, my favorite book. And I was just like, okay, grandma, you do that. All right, all right. And then after that, we, oh, we read, like, a bunch of, like, these plays, and that was fun, because you got, like, assigned a character, and you could really get into it. Um, we read 12 Angry Men, and, um, it's about, like, this one little kid who got, like, charged for murder, but, like, the eighth jury dude is like, no, he's innocent, but all the other jurors are like, no, he's guilty, and then bit by bit, the eighth jury member convinces all of them. That, I think it's the eighth. It's the eighth or the ninth or the tenth. I don't know. And he convinces everyone. And he's like, yo, this kid is innocent. And they're just like, whoa, he is. Um, yes. And I forgot who I was assigned to be. But I think I was assigned to be like, I think maybe this sixth or i think i was a fifth i don't know in the movie i'm the dude who with like the hawaiian shirt who washes his hands in the back and he's like yo what's up eight and he's like okay cool uh and then after that we read and then there were none and i was the role of like the creepy maid or the creepy uh butler or whatever his name was who like kills his wife (laughs) No, he doesn't kill his wife. I don't know. He and his wife kill someone. I'm pretty sure. Well, actually, everyone on the island kills someone. Because, yeah, that's just how it be. Um, but that was cool. That was cool. You know, oh, and oh, the funny story. So we watched this, like, uh, movie. Well, not movie, but, like, this three-part, like, TV series of it in class. And, like, bruh, all the girls in the class were, like, fangirling over Lombard. Like, the actor who played Lombard. I think he, like, was also in Lord of the Rings, too, as, like, one of the, uh, Hobbit guys. But everyone was fangirling the dude who played Lombard, and, like, there was this one scene where he's, like, shirtless, and everyone was like, (laughs) and I'm not gonna lie, I was fangirling over him, too. But the reason why was because everyone else was doing it, and the power of conformity, I don't know, Vsauce made a minefield about it. That, it it was, it, it was interesting, but... Uh, my congestions are trying to kill me. Congest- can a congestion kill you? No. You know what? I want 
when I grow up, I want to be one of the Mucinex, Mucinex little boys. Y'all remember the Mucinex commercials where, it, like, it was, like, this nasty-ass booger dude? <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait. <coughs> it's dubstep time, but with my nose. Mm-mm-mm. All right. So, there was that. And so, and then there were none is, like, about, like, everyone's, like, gathered onto this island, and, like, there's this mysterious killer, and he, like, kills all of them off, and then he kills himself at the end, and then he, like, is, is a whole thing, but I'm not gonna spoil it, even though I spoiled everything else, and then there's, like, this creepy nursery rhyme that has to go with it, and it's just wild, all right. Um, and after that, we read The Freaking Giver, which is literally a book that I read when I was in third grade at some winery. Because, like, my, when, side tangent, when I was, like, a little kid, my parents would just drag me off to the winery. And I was just like, bro, I, like, there's nothing for me to do here. So I just sat there and read books. So I ended up reading The Giver. And, and I was on a couch, and then this creepy lady came over to me, and she's like, what book is that? And I'm just like, the giver, bitch. And she's like, ah, okay. So, yeah. And it's basically about, like, this, like, weird, like, quote-unquote utopia when it's actually a dystopia. And um, it's basically, like, about these, like, this guy who he's like, I am the giver, and you are a little boy, and you must save your brother, who's not really your brother, but okay. I really don't know how to describe it. That's really not accurate at all. But it's uh, it's an okay book. I don't know. I haven't been reading any of these books. But, like, let's just say all the books in 7th grade I fucking hated. 6th um, grade, Stargirl was actually... It's, like, it's a really good easy read. Like, it's a good easy read. And I'm pretty sure GBA ASMR, uh, she, like, did a reading of it. And I'm like, yo, I read that book. That's wild. And, um, The the Gay was a bad book because it was boring. Well, actually, I don't know. I kind of like survival books. I like, I like survival, like, books and, like, survival episodes of, like, TV shows where they're like, we're stranded on an island. <laughs> we're stranded on an island. Yeah, actually, you know what? I like stranded on an island books and stuff like that because I read this one book, uh, like, f- on my free will where it's, like, this girl and, like, I forgot the name of it, but, like, she, like, has this, like, pet wolf, and she's, like, pet wolf time, and, like, everyone, like, on her island leaves, but she's left on the island alone to scavenge for herself, but then her wolf pet dies because another wolf dude kills him. If someone can, like, remind me the name of that book, like, please let me know because it was a good-ass book. And then there was another book that I read on my own free will where it was this dude who just goes in the wild and he has to, like, survive on his own. That's literally so, like, broad. But he's, like, this little boy and, like, he, like, makes a treehouse or something like that. I don't remember it completely. But I remember the other one happening where, yeah, the girl is, like, left on the island alone. And, like, she, yeah, she has... She has a whole damn wolf bud. But anyway, back on track. So eighth grade books I had to read. We also uh, we also read Night, which is something that I read this year in 10th grade for some reason. But in eighth grade, it took me like a month. And literally in 10th grade, it took me a week. We rushed through like three chapters a day. So I really, yeah. Um, So, but we'll get to that later. And Night is like this book is or is it a memoir um by Ellie Wiesel which is like a true story about like him and he's like going to the concentration camps and my father dying and woo 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 and it's a beautiful tragedy because Eli Eli Ellie yes he poetically writes even though it's about like you know the holocaust uh which is cute I'm gonna need to blow my nose again. Why is my like, why are my sinuses being little bitches? Uh, stop being little bitches, sinuses. Uh. <laughs> All right. So I don't think I remember like any other like. 
I think we finished it off with The Giver, which was really kind of a weak thing to do because it was such like an easy read. It was such an easy read. I read it when I was literally in third grade without any problem. And you're telling me that I need to do it again in like eighth grade? Nah. Nah, nah, nah. All right. And now uh, we go on to our high school years. Uh, for summer reading, I had to read All of Mice and Men, Sis We Already Been New, uh, Gilgamesh, and a separate piece. Gilgamesh was about this dude where he's with his friend Enkidu, and he's on, like, the search for, like, immortality or something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure. I have no clue. I don't really remember it. But a separate piece, let me tell you. It was so gay. It was the gayest book ever. So you got Gene and Finny, uh, Gene from the Emoji Movie, Finn the Dog from, uh, it's uh south park (laughs) no from adventure time nah but it's about like these dudes in like the 40s or 20s or something like that i think it's like the 40s because they talk about like the war but these dudes in the 40s and gene's like i need to be better than finn finny finnegan he's like i need to be better than finn finny so what gene does is yeet him off of a tree and then he's like well, I guess I can never uh, participate in sports again. And then Jean's just like, you little bitch, Finny. But it's so gay because there's this one scene on the beach where like Finny's like, you're my best friend, Jean. You know, I just love you so much. And Jean's like, I'm going to eat you out of a tree, bitch. So, yeah. Well, he doesn't actually eat him out of Actually, he does kind of. He doesn't purposefully eat him out of a tree. He kind of does, though. I don't know. You have to read it yourself. But it's a gay ass book. And then... Uh, you know, Finny gets all angsty and stuff, and spoiler, he, like, yeets himself off, like, the stairs, and then he just straight up dies. Well, he doesn't, like, purposely yeet himself, but he, like, yeets himself down the stairs, and then, like, Gene's like, what the hell, dude? And he's like, die. Okay. Um, and then we read, well, then, literally, in ninth grade, my teacher spent an entire quarter and some of the year on the summer reading books, which is cool, I guess, because she's doing a third old job, but, like, we already did all the essays and read all of them already, so you don't have to spend such a long time going over them, and I just don't understand. Like, literally, like, basically, we reread it in class, and I, we, we did it over the summer already, and I just, ah, uh, ah. Uh. All right, so, to continue on, then we moved on to the Odyssey, which was really stupid because it's such a long book, and I don't even know what lessons I learned from it. It was just a really long book, and uh, Odysseus is a little bitch because he cheats on his wife, like, on multiple occasions, and his wife is just sitting there, you know, tons of suitors coming around being like, love you, Penelope, and she's just like, nah, fam, but then Telemachus is this edgy little boy who's like, my father, I have father issues, I mean, same, but like, he's like, I have father issues, I've never even seen my dad and like i'm just like me neither bitch i've never seen my dad either relatable character and so then like the gods and stuff and poseidon's pissed off at odysseus uh i forgot why i don't know but poseidon's really a pissed off at odysseus for some reason but then he but like it's yeah okay it's just unnecessarily long, and we took, like, an entire half the year on reading it. And then after that, we, uh, what did we do? Oh, we read Julius Caesar. And what really made me mad was, you know, we had to, like, read out loud and, you know, all that jazz. But the perfect pod, my name is Julia. I could have been like, Julia Caesar. But no, she gave the role of Julius Caesar to the only guy in her class. Simply because he was a guy. He didn't even read anything properly. He was stupid. I was just like, excuse me, my name's Julia. So you could just, uh, Julius Caesar, do you not see like the beautifulness that could have come from that? You know? Anyway. Uh, we had to memorize those, like, soliloquies and crud and it and i don't really remember a lot it's like oh pardon me thou bleeding piece of earth for i am meek and gentle with these butchers thou art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times woe to the hand that shed this costly blood over thy wounds now do i prophesy which like dumb mouse do do ope their ruby lips something utterance of my tongue i don't remember the rest a curse shall light the limbs of men. Something strife of Italy. Something. Blah, 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 blah. And they all die. 
they all just die, I think, I'm pretty sure. And then, okay, we ended the year with, uh, (coughs) we ended the year with Crime and Punishment. Crime and Punishment. Let me just tell you. It was what was actually super wild was Crime and Punishment came out the same time that PewDiePie did his book review series on it. And I was like, yo, PewDiePie, you got me covered. But like he didn't really reveal much. But it was a it was actually like I enjoyed it because I felt smart reading it. I was like, yeah, I'm smart. <laughs> but like looking back, literally the language used in it isn't even like too horribly complex. But like looking like as a ninth grader reading it, I'm just like, this is challenging, guys. It's challenging reading. But like me now as a 10th grader, I'm just like, I mean, I like, it is a challenge, but like, it's not as like beautifully and eloquently written as you actually think it is. It's like, it's a nice piece of work, but it's so long. It's, oh, Crime and Punishment is so fucking long. And we only had a month to get through it. A singular month. So like, you might think that that like is a lot of time, but it's really not in school's time because, um, it's basically, like, 15 days and not even, like, maybe, like, 10 days at most of, like, actual class discussion to do, go through it. Because the thing is, my school goes on an A, B, like, A day, B day schedule. So, like, I only had English on B days. And also accounting, like, weekends and stuff, too. So, we literally didn't have a lot of classes to go over it. And it's basically about this guy, uh, Raskolnikov. Ugh, there's so many, like, dumb little russian names because it was written by like doskayevsky doskayev something um but it's just about this guy named raskolnikov and he um is in this like situation where he's really poor his sister is being forced to work for someone that is like basically a sexual predator um i don't know what's going on with her mom but something's going on with her mom but so all their names are so dumb and there are like five different names for five different characters there's like what's her name there's like avdotya romania there's like dosha dosh i don't know like i don't remember their names there's raskolnikov there's Razumikin, there's sonia there's oh yeah there's sonia donia avdotya uh and like like uh something there's one character's name has the word gay in it, and I'm like, ha, gay, <laughs> gay, <laughs> and I think he's, he kills himself, but yeah, but then, okay, so Raskolnikov is in this place of, like, poverty, and he's like, I'm angsty, and I don't have any money, so he goes to this pawnbroker, and he straight up kills the pawnbroker and her, um, a neat sister, I think, her, like, younger sister, and he's just like, okay, uh, it's so I can get money, but he doesn't even take a lot of money, and the money that he does take, he ends up, like, burying away, but then, uh, Razumikin's like, I'm doing an intervention, I'm doing an intervention on you, Raskolnikov, uh, and then I don't remember, like, everything completely, but then, oh, oh, the marmalade guy, uh, the marmalade guy, what's his name? Marmeladov, there's this guy named Mar- Marmeladov that, uh, Raskolnikov meets at a bar, and then Marmeladov's like, my daughter has to resort to prostitution to help the family, because I'm a drunk dude. And then Raskolnikov's like, yo, that's actually whack. I, like, that's make, that makes me angry. It makes me so angry that I can almost kill someone. Uh, so he does that. And his, her sis, his uh, Raskolnikov's sister is getting, like, very sexually... He's get She's, like... All the sexual predators want her. Um, but then she ends up getting with uh, Raskolnikov's friend, Razumikin, which I support wholly. I, Donia, Donia, however you pronounce her name, Donia x uh, Razumikin equals OTP. Like, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but then Marmeladov, like, gets, like, fucking run over or something, and, uh, Raskolnikov is there to witness it, and he's like, what the hell, dude? But then, um, Marmeladov's daughter, Sonia, I think is her name, she's, like, this prostitute, but, like, she, like, she only does it to help her family, because she was, like, forced into it. She's not, like, some sort of nasty bitch. Um, but then, um, Raskolnikov's like, yo, Sonia, you kind of hot. And then he opens up to Sonia, and he's like, yeah, I killed this lady. And then Sonia's like, the 
heart, your heart, my, I love you, and then her love saves him, and oh, the whole time, this, like, dude named, like, Ilya, or whatever, like, this, like, detective is, like, right on the tips of Raskolnikov's tail, and Raskolnikov's, like, you know, I'm gonna straight up just admit that I, like, did it, but, like, I'm gonna do it in a subtle way, and, like, uh, Raskolnikov eventually gets caught, but he doesn't really get caught. He sort of just admits it at the very end. And then the epilogue is he's, like, in jail. But then, like, Sonia visits him and he's just like, I love you. So, I don't know. It's a, I actually enjoyed Crime and Punishment just because I felt smart reading it. And it had, a, it was, like, a story about redemption or something like that. And just, like, how, like, murderers are human kind of question mark not really i don't know the ones that have emotions are human the ones that don't have emotions uh, that's that's a more uh debatable topic but we're not gonna get on that tangent um all right so that was ninth grade in 10th grade over the summer we had to read (laughs) uh jane Eyre and siddhartha siddhartha took me like two days to read jane Eyre took me uh quite a while actually it was stupid and Siddhartha was about this dude named Siddhartha, and he, like, kills himself. He doesn't kill himself, but he's, like, living the life. He's living the life as a Brahmin son, but then he's, like, I don't want this. And he goes out willingly into the wild, and he suffers, and he's, like, we gotta suffer, man. Uh, and then he, like, fucks this prostitute, and then they have a son. But he doesn't know about it until the very end. And then his son is, like, yo, what the heck? But then Siddhartha's, like, the river, the river. And then his son, like, runs away, and he's, like, my son. But then he's, like, the river. And he's, like, and then his little buddy Govinda's, like, let me kiss you. And then Jane Eyre is about this lady, and she, like, goes to, like, she's, like, abused as a child, like, T.J. Miller, like, my beer, like, Miller. I rap in tree because I am rapping freestyle. Okay, sorry. Um, but anyway, there's that. And she, like, this creepy dude named Rochester is just like, I'm in love with you, Jane Eyre. And then Jane Eyre is just like, bruh, I'm, not in lo- I'm in love with you too, but it turns out you're a bigamist, so I'm not going to have that life. So she runs away, and then Rochester gets yeeted into a fire. But then... Then, like, Jane Eyre returns back, and Jane's like, Yo, Rochester, what's going on? Oh, you got burned by a fire. I guess we're equal now, because you're a cripple, and I'm a woman, so <laughs> what's the difference? We're equals. And so then they uh, they come together as one, because um, the person that Rochester was originally married to was killed in the fire because she started it, and to hop onto that idea after that we read why it's her guess so see which was about the lady that rochester had married before jane and her name is bertha but in the story it's antoinette and basically it's this whole like arranged marriage and then antoinette slowly just becomes crazy because rochester's like a bad dude you know um i thought someone was in my house <sighs> and that's yeah um and it's basically, it's a pretty short book. But then we read Into the Wild, which is, like, a true story about this dude who goes, his name is Chris McCandless, and he goes into the wild, and he's like, yo, I'm going into the wild because I don't like my parents, and I'm just straight out gonna, like, run away and move to Alaska and just sort of hillbilly around the entire country. And I like survival books, but it really wasn't about survival. It was mainly about, like, him like the people who have met him on his journeys they're like talking about like how he was as a character um you know and uh yeah (laughs) okay okay and after we read those books what did we even do i don't remember i don't remember a thing or two oh we had like a poetry thing like a poetry unit i don't want to get deep into that um, and then we read Dante's Inferno, which I thought I was hyped for that to be a good book, because I'm like, yo, hell, hell seems pretty cool, but it actually wasn't even that good of a, it was, it was a nasty, crappy book, because, you know, I don't know, like, my ninth grade teacher hyped it up so much, but, like, it wasn't even that good, I'm not gonna lie, so there's that, and after we read, uh, Dante's Inferno, we read Night, which we, which I already did in eighth grade, so if you wanna, uh, learn about night you can just go back in time and uh go back to that part and now what are we doing now what are we doing now 
Oh, now we're reading Macbeth and doing, like, a state testing review. <laughs> Macbeth is annoying because I don't like Shakespeare. Ree! So, yes, those were the books I had to read in school from what I can remember. I've definitely read more in classes. I just really have no recollection of them because I am stupid. So thanks for listening to my single person podcast. This is Tiny Ting signing out.